When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no Verse 3, verse 3. Here we go. 
There's not a prayer like the lowly Jesus. No, not a one, no, not a one. None else can heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will die till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one, no, not one. And yet no friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will die till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not a one, no, not a one. Did ever saint find his friend, forsake him? No, not a one, no, not a one. Or sinner find that he would not take him? No, not a one, no, not a one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will die till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not a one, no, not a one. Was there a gift like the Savior given? No, not a one, no, not a one. Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not a one, no, not a one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not a one, no, not a one. Amen. Amen. I would like to ask Brother Roger to open up the service with a word oh, yeah. of prayer. Here we go. Heavenly Father, thank you for this gathering today. Thank you for bringing everyone here safely. Thank you for all the blessing you're giving us every day. You have given us that sin's life is possible to us with this passage. You have asked us to deny ourselves, take up our cross and Come follow on. you. Even when our spirits are willing, the flesh is weak. You know our hearts, Father. Help us with your Holy Spirit to examine our hearts <laughs> and hear from you, Lord. The longer we walk with you, the more we look like you. We desire to become <laughs> more and more like you, less selfish and more selfless. Right. Willing to deny ourselves in any and all situations, you have told us that when we lose our life, for your sake, we will save it. Save us from ourselves, Lord. We can wait for the rapture and for you to come. That's right. Come on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Oh, I want to be seated. <laughs> this is the first time that, this is the first time, I can't believe it, the first time that a prayer revved me more up than singing. Whoa, <laughs> Amen. Come on. Prayer revved me more up than singing. Amen. All right. Please take out your white hymnals. Please take out your white hymnals. I like to sing about God Almighty. All right, let's open up your white hymnals to page 75 in your white hymnals, 75. Oh, it's one of the favorite songs of one of our members. So page 75. Oh, oh it's that one? Okay. Page 75. This time. <laughs> yeah, the reason why he, was, he wasn't part of the 90 and 9, that's why he likes the song. <laughs> page 75 in your white hymnal. All right, so because the song is so good and I'm tempted to skip a verse for time's sake, let's just go over time, shall we? Woo! All right, so let's sing all five verses. Here we go. There were ninety and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the fold. But one was out on the hills away Thy ninety and nine are 
are they not enough for thee? But the shepherd made answer, this of mine has wandered away from me. And although the road be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep. I go to the desert to find my sheep, but none of the ransomed ever knew how deep were the waters crossed, nor how dark was the night that the Lord passed through, ere he found his sheep that was Monday night Bible study this upcoming Monday, which is tomorrow, will be at Sister Gloria's house at 8 p.m. Um, next week, we're having visitation instead of street preaching. And it's going to be, we're going to park at the same place, 2975 Spring Garden Drive, and we're going to make our way to wherever we left off. And we're also going to have fellowship again this, this time at Sister Gloria's house on Saturday, April 14th. Please bring your own food. It's going to be an awesome potluck. It's going to be good. I'm going to bring some, I'm going to bring some bread. Um, and another thing is we're actually having, uh, if you guys didn't know our church, along with Pastor's Dad's church, we have a summer camp coming up in, uh, at the end of July, at the very last week of July to the first week of August. Um, we have summer camp. And if you want to go, please let Pastor know by the end of this month because they have to know exactly how many people are going to reserve the campsite. And I would personally encourage you to go because as, if you can test, a pastor can testify before I went to summer camp, I wasn't so on fire for God, but when I came back, I was a different man. <laughs> now, in terms of motivation now, it's, we all have our ups and downs, but I think it's one of those events that we need to, it's really important for us to kind of recharge because other than the really good preaching, because we have a pastor up from Florida flying all the way in to California and he's preaching really good things for us. His, his name is Brother David Walker. And his preaching is really good, but not only that, we have kids that are like 10, 11 years old that I think serve God better than I do. Yeah. When you see that, you're going to be like, uh, what, what have I been doing all my life? Yeah, so good, it's going to be a huge encouragement. Um, and I really encourage you guys, if you can come, to please attend. It is a really nice experience. And you have people from all, all ages, so you won't be alone, I promise. <laughs> And um, our, this week's memory verse is, as we said last week, it's going to be Psalms chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Let me read that to you. Psalms chapter 12, not 1. We did that last time. 
Psalms chapter 12, verses 1 to, 1 to 2. And the Bible reads, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity every one with his, with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and a double heart do they speak. Now, these verses are telling you that, you know, you need to beg God for help because the world is going to come get you. They're going to use your neighbors. They're going to speak. You know, they're going to gossip at you. They're going to say bad things about you, call you a weirdo for, say, you know, serving Jesus Christ and being saved. And they're also going to have a double heart. So they're going to say, hey, man, Brother Sean, I really love you. But in the back of their mind, they're saying, I hope you drop dead tomorrow. So you have that a lot these days. Um, the hypocrisy is real. <laughs> no, I didn't really mean that, but, but did I, you know? <laughs> so the double heart is something to watch out for. Watch out for the hypocrisy. Ask for the Lord's, Lord's help. Now that we've done with that, um, those of us who practice the Arise My Soul Arise song, please, um, we're going to be singing this special now. Yes, sir. We want to help out all of our brothers and sisters who are overseas, and they're trying to spread the word, and sometimes even in dangerous places. So I pray that you'll help us give cheerfully for that cause, and mm -hmm. I pray that you'll protect those people overseas so that they may minister Amen. in their best ability for your sake. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to listen to what our brother has to say from the Word of God, and he needs no introduction. All right, brother, you go ahead and preach the Word of God to us. Amen. All right, thank you, brother. Nehemiah chapter 1. And if any of y'all remember pastors preaching last week, he was preaching about building that wall, right? And how those trolls are going to come 
and how Tobiah, Sambalit, how all those people are going to come. They're going to talk bad against you. And they're going to they're gonna mock you. They're going to make fun of you when you're trying to build that wall. Um, I, the last two weeks, I th- can honestly say, I think were two of the greatest sermons I've ever heard. Um, so praise the Lord that uh, he f- filled pastor with that Holy Spirit. Please pray that the Holy Spirit would be in this room today yes. just as much. Amen. What I want to go over today is... Uh, before we can get to that point where we can rebuild that wall, there's some things that have to happen here before we can go out and help other people. So Nehemiah chapter 1, we're going to read the whole chapter. So if you've fallen behind on your Bible reading this week, don't worry about it. We'll at least catch you up a a whole chapter. So Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible reads, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, And it came to pass in the month Chislu, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan the palace, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress... I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out into the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants and thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name. And prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I am nothing, Lord. I am an absolute worm, and I need you, Father, to fill me with your Holy Spirit. But you are such a great God that you can take these these dirty vessels, Father. You can fill us with the Holy Spirit, and you can give other people that are here today something so that it can help them and clean them up, Father. Yes. I pray that you'd wash me clean with your precious blood. I pray that you would fill this whole room with the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. And I pray that you would use this preaching to help people in these last days, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, preacher. All right, so you need to recognize some things. There's some things that we need before we can go out and before we can rebuild that wall and we can rebuild Jerusalem. There's some things we need, and you need to recognize what we need, okay? And the first thing that you need to recognize that you need before you can build your wall and help someone else build their wall is, and it's funny because this is the first point, but in my opinion, this is honestly the hardest one. The first one is you need to recognize your need to care, to actually care about other people. Look here in verse 2. It says that Han and I, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. So Han and I came and it made Nehemiah, when Nehemiah saw Han and I, it made him think about his brothers. It made him think about his brethren that were, that were in Jerusalem and they're the escaped. And he's like, hey, how are they doing? How are they doing? And so the first thing you need to realize is you need to care enough to actually think about other people, to think about someone that's not you. 
You need to be conscious of other people, what they're going through and what they might need. And Nehemiah, he had this, he cared. When I, you know, when, I don't know, maybe there's, maybe you started coming with another brother or sister to church and they're not coming anymore. Um, and when I see you, I think of, oh man, yeah, I remember so-and-so used to come with them. I wonder, I wonder how they're doing. And maybe that'll cause me to ask them, you know, I, we know where your brother is, but you know, when I, when I don't see her, hey, how's your brother doing, man? You know, like to, to even care enough. And once yeah, again, speaking for myself, this is the hardest one for me because I don't care about other people like I should. And the first thing, if you get nothing else out of this sermon that you need to understand is you need to understand that you need to care about other people. And so Nehemiah, he cared about his brethren. And that's my first question today is, do you, do you care to think about other people? Not yourself, not your problems, not what you're going through. How, how often do you care enough to think about someone else in your day-to-day life? Um, and I think that that's, it's a, it's a huge mark of these last days that we're living in is our carelessness. And we're all very numb. We're all very desensitized. We have been put in front of a screen and we've been shown horrible things on a daily basis to where, I mean, if you take one glance at our prayer list, I can't even count on, I can't even count how many people have cancer right now. There's so many people that have cancer and the sad reality is I don't care. I don't care like I should. If I truly cared like I should, that would cause me to ask more about them. I don't ask you about your dad as, you know, as, as much as I should. I don't, I don't ask about Pastor Shrive as much as I should. I don't think about them as much as I should. And, and that's the problem. That's the problem. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's what we're talking about. Sin is so rampant today. Iniquity is abounding. And we, whether you're a Christian or you're lost, I think that it's natural. We are a colder people. We are not warm people. And we don't care like we should. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. If that's not us, if that's not the, the people living in this day and age, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. And so the first thing we need to get out of the way, and I, I want you to be asking yourself this question. I want you to be checking yourself. Do I honestly care? Yeah. It's okay to be honest. Just like when we ask people like, hey, do you know, are you going to heaven when you die? And you get those people, I don't know. That's okay. It's okay not to know. But you should at least be looking inside and asking yourself, do I, do I honestly care? Do I honestly care? And the answer is you don't. Because if we, we, if we honestly did care like we should, you'd be, I mean, I don't know what you're doing in your free time. If you're, you could be praying three hours a day. It's not enough. Because if you have enough in you to, to pray three hours a day, you should be pushing yourself to pray four hours a day. You should be praying more. So the first thing we need to, to realize before we can build up our wall so we, can, uh, so we can protect folks that are inside right now and before we can help others build up their wall, there's some things that we need to do with our heart before we can go out and actually do the work. And so first thing is we need to care. And Nehemiah, he cared. He cared enough to think about his brethren. He also cared enough to ask about them. So he was curious. It says, He and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped. He opened his mouth and he said, hey, how, you know, how are they doing? How are they doing? I haven't seen them in a while. You know, he hasn't been coming to church. I haven't, is everything okay? You know, he used to come to street preaching every week and now he's not even in church. Like, can I pray for him? Like, what can I do? So, and once again, we, we as Bible believers, we know at that judgment seat, it's all going to be of what sort? Where was your heart at? So, so let me ask you this. When you ask, okay, let's say you, you ask about so-and-so. How are you asking? And maybe you're really good. Maybe you're really good at masking it to where it comes across really spiritually. Like, oh, hey, brother, how's he doing? Uh-huh. You know, but, but God knows your heart, and he knows what's really going on in there. That's good. Come so on. so that's, we need to care enough about one another to where we're thinking about each other. Yeah. We, we need to care enough about each other where we're asking about 
one another. Where, hey, how's he doing? Hey, how can I pray for you this week? What's going on? Because we all got stuff going on in our lives. And we got stuff that we're not, it's too personal. That's yeah. why we have unspokens on the prayer list. And, and so, but at least, I mean, I know that when folks have asked me like, hey, how's, you know, how's this prayer request going that, we've, that, you, that you asked about? How's, I've been praying for that. Man, that makes that gives me comfort. Yes, it does. That Amen. rebuilds my wall. Do it more. That helps me up. To, that helps me out to where I can go out that next week and I can take on the world again and be like, you know what? I know for a fact this person's praying for me. And that's how we're going to be able to be ready to rebuild our walls. Um, I've no, I've noticed that I'm probably going to get in trouble for this. Women are very smart askers. Women are very smart at how they ask about other people. You've probably heard, have you ever listened to that? You're like, oh, where's, where's Bob and Cindy at? I haven't seen them for two months. Where are they at? And you're like, I, I, I don't know, I have, I have no idea. Why? Why, why, why are you asking? Well, you know, I just know that Bob and, you know, they were having problems ever since, ever since Judy, oh, er, ever since Judy, you know, she dropped out of, co- she dropped out of college. You know, she dropped out of college, right? Don't you? And she was dating. She was dating that guy. He, w- I think he was on drugs. That's good, <laughs> he was on drugs. So you know, I'm just, I just want, I just want to. No, no, no. They go on and on and on. And I'm honestly, I'm not singling out anyone in this room. I'm just oh, yeah. talking about. This is what the Lord gave me. This I found that women are very, very smart about making it sound pious when they ask. Yeah, they do. That's good. No, you're right. Yeah. But you're just trying to get the dirt. You're just trying to get, you're either trying to make yourself feel better or you're trying to get the dirt just because what they just love to know. They just have to know everything, <laughs> right? Good, you could start a set, you could start a sentence. So you'd be like, oh, oh yeah, I was going to say, and they're like, oh, never mind, never mind. And they're like, what? What were you going to say? What? <laughs> and you're like, no, I, you're like, oh, no, nothing. I wasn't even going to, I was like, no, what? T- tell me, tell me. You're not going to tell me? You're not, like women just want to know everything. So. So that's, that's one thing we need to be, we, another thing we need to recognize is, that, and everyone's looking at Kirsten, but I'm, not, I'm honestly not talking about Kirsten. Um, uh, that's, that's the next thing is, how are you asking? You may have yourself fooled enough to think that you care and that you're asking, but honestly, where is your heart at when you're asking about that person? Nehemiah, he was asking genuinely. He honestly wanted to know about them, how they were doing. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing. The second thing we need to, to, we need to recognize that we need is we need to be concerned. Not only, it's not enough just to care on the surface. We need to care more than that. We need to honestly be concerned. Look at chapter, uh, sorry, look at verse three. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. So you you can see here, Nehemiah, it affected him so much. I mean, when's the last time you... When's the last time you fasted for yourself, let alone someone else? When's the last time you made your, you forced yourself to miss a meal? Yeah. Why? Because we see in the Bible that when you're, what did Jesus say? This, this kind come without, not uh, by nothing else other than prayer and fasting. So we know that there's spiritual power to be had when it comes to fasting and getting your prayers answered before God. So when's the last time that you cared enough about not even talking about someone else, but yourself. When's the last time you cared enough about a prayer of yours that you wanted answered yeah. to fast and to miss a few meals? Go one sleep cycle. Wake up, don't eat all day, and that night, go to sleep without eating, wake up, and then eat something. When's the last time you did that? You need to be concerned. You need to be not just an, and once again, as I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. Yeah. I don't care like I should. I'm not concerned as much as I should be when I hear, you know, what everyone's going through, what the things we're praying for for you guys. I'm not as concerned as I should be, but I want to be. And I want you guys to be so that we can all, we can one by one, like he was talking about last week. Devil wants to knock, knock over a brick. I'm yeah, going to put three amen. bricks. Amen. You're knock over, I'll, I'll go two. You know what? I, the most I've ever done is one day. I'll go two days without fasting. You're not going to beat me. You're not going to break me down. You're not going to break down 
them. I'll tell you, I'm not going to let you break down them because I'm going to fast for them and I'm going to pray for them. That's, that's the level of concern that we need to have for one each other, yeah. for one another. One thing you need to realize is that just like it says here in verse 3, it says the remnant that are left of the captivity, the remnant that are left of the captivity. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Romans chapter 11 verse 5. Look around you. I mean, it, it wouldn't matter if we were in a mega church right now and there's 10,000. It just kind of proves the point even more that there's, you know, less than 30 of us in here. Everyone in this room, if you're a Christian, if you're saved, you are a part of a remnant yeah. of people who were able to escape the captivity of sin and death and hell. That's good. That's good Amen. We're on the same team. We're, we're a small group. If we can't count on one another to be concerned wow. enough to do that, to, to ask about it one another, to think about one another, to pray for one another, to fast for one another, to have each other's backs, who can we, who can we count on? Of course we have Jesus. We know that. But how much more? How much more could we have if we did this, if we it resolved within us that we were going to do this for one another, and if we honestly wanted to do this for one another? I'm not at the point where I can do all this stuff. This is just what the Lord put on my heart. When, when I'm trying to come up with a sermon, the Lord's preaching at me. That's how I get these points. Because yeah. God's going, you don't care like him. Mm-hmm. It doesn't concern you to hear about, you know, uh, this, this lost loved one that we're praying for. You remember when your dad was lost? You remember how much he cared? You didn't even care enough back then when it was your dad, did you? Because if I did, I would have been, I would have been fasting way more. I would have been praying way more. But I want to. I want to be able to help you guys. I want to be able to help you guys build up your walls. And it's funny how the Lord does things because when you can get some of these things down to where you're thinking about other people and not yourself, Uh you will then start to build your own wall. That's how God looks at things. That's how he does things. You're not going to build your wall by thinking, oh, I got to do this for me and I got to pray for this and I got to fast for this. No, you build your wall by looking at other people's walls. That's how you're supposed to build your wall. And that's, that's how God works it out. When you stop looking at yourself, you're not even at your wall. Your wall is back there. You're helping so-and-so build up their wall. Yeah. Jesus Christ is building your wall. He's, oh, Amen. Oh, 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 he just, oh, he, Amen. oh, he just, he just visited that, that brother or sister in, uh, in the hospital. You know what? I'm, I'm He's he's busy over there. Yes, sir. I'll grab a break. Yeah, oh, that's good. Oh, Woo! he's oh he just he's fat. Oh wow, he's praying. Wow, he's praying uh, for the third time today for that. Oh, let's give him a break. Let's give him. A break. This is the stuff that we need. Yes. And we need to recognize Praise before God. we can do that, something has to happen inside of us. And so Nehemiah had that. He had that. He was concerned about their condition. And also, I want you to see he was concerned enough to to cry. He was concerned enough to cry. You see that in verse four. What was the, yeah, you know, in the in the show, the TV shows or the movies, what happens? The doctor comes in, he takes like the mask, he's performing surgery on the loved one. He takes the mask off, he takes the scrubs off. He's like, "Why don't you sit down? I have some news for you." When I heard these words, I sat down and wept. It buckled his knees. When's the last time you got some news that literally you could not stand up? You're like, I got to sit down. I can't take this. I can't take this. And you wept. Yeah. And this is an Old Testament. <laughs> this is an Old Testament guy who doesn't even know Jesus Christ. Wow. And you know him. And you know what Jesus Christ has done for you. He's just he's a law follower. Why We love to like make fun of, not make fun of, but we love to like point at the Jews when you read your Bible. And it's hard not to, amen. You're like, oh, they're just messing up again and again and again. And God shows them this miracle and they're messing up again and again and again. But it's funny how someone following the law and didn't even know if he was saved or not cares enough and has a soft enough heart to be buckled, to be, to, to cry. I honestly can't tell you the last time I cried of hearing news about some, someone else. And I say, I speak that to my own shame. I am hardened and I am numb when it comes to a lot, uh, when it just comes to just stuff, honestly, anything. Mm-hmm. I've seen so much. I've seen so many movies. I've seen everything on the news is negative. It's like, you can't help it. But I want to, 
I want to cry. I know that sounds weird, but if I can get what Nehemiah had, I need to go through what he went through. And maybe you're going through what you're going through right now, the problems you're having, so that when you come across someone who's going through those same problems, yeah. you'll actually be able to relate to them. Amen. Right? Yeah. You'll be able to relate to them. And, and, what is it, and what does it say? I believe in Romans 12, it says, rejoice with them that do rejoice, weep with them that weep. There's something, there's something powerful there. There's something powerful about literally looking at someone and crying together. Because you can see on their face, I know what you're going through. I know what you're going through. I'm feeling what you're feeling right now. And I want that for this church. Do you want that? Do you want that for this church? We need it. He was concerned enough to cry. He was also concerned enough to bear their burdens. Uh, we're not going to turn there, but Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, yes. considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So if you're thinking, ah, oh, you know, he hasn't been coming out to street preaching, I got this. I'll go, I'll preach twice as hard. He hasn't been coming out to soul winning. I'm going to go to soul winning if he won't be there. You're, that's, you're, you, you're missing everything. You're missing everything. If you think that you're so strong, you're such a strong spiritual Christian, I come to all the activities. I do the prayer. I do my 15, my 30 minutes, my 45, my two hours. I do all that stuff every day. They're not doing that. You're a fool. You're Amen. missing the whole point. You're missing the whole point. That's good. Amen. The whole point is if you are spiritual, you'll be able to go and bear yes. their burdens. Uh -huh. there we go. And I'm not there yet. Once again, if I was, I should have, you know what? I know, I know Brother Jack's going through this. I should give him a call. Yeah. Just let him know I'm praying for him. Brother Chuck, he's, his health has been so bad for so long. You know what? I know where he lives. Why don't I just drop by, knock on his door, see how he's doing? But we don't care enough to think about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is what we need. This is what we need to do if we want to get to that next level where we can build each other up, where we can really help and make a difference. Uh, you know, it's funny. There's this, like, no man left behind thing in the military, right, where they'll brave the ele These guys will brave the elements. They might be like, you know, the enemies just got them hunkered down this one guy he can't even move but these lost soldiers are so brave and courageous that they'll brave that gunfire they'll go back into the line of fire they'll go back into sure death pretty much why to go get that brother to go get him i don't care if i get shot up i don't care if i get blown up i don't care if i get captured by the enemy and i'm a pow they're torturing me doing all kinds of horrible stuff to me He's not being left behind. He's going to know, if he's going to die right now, he's going to know that someone came back for him. And that's what we need to do. We need to let each other know, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to let you fall, man. I'm praying for you. I'm, fa I'm fasting for you. And if you're, if, you're, if you're not able to come, if you're not able to come, I'll tell you this. I'll keep your, I'll keep your seat open, you know? Or, or, or give him a call, but hey, man, we love you. Don't, don't let the devil get you down. Come, come back. We yeah, want man, you back. Good. We want you back. That's how you bear another's burdens. That's how you help build them up and stop thinking about yourself. Yeah, that's good. Next thing you need, the next thing we need to recognize that we do need is we need to confess. We need to confess. It's not enough just to care. It's not enough just to be concerned. It's not enough to fast and pray. Uh, we need to confess. And you'll see that here in verse 5. If you look at verse 5, what does it say? Nehemiah says, and said, in verse 4 it says, and prayed before the God of heaven. Verse 5, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night. Did you get that? Day and night he's praying. He's not praying for 15 minutes over his prayer list and going, okay, I'm good. I got the prayer list out of the day. No, he's thinking about them. 
He's fasting for them and he's praying constantly for them. And he's confessing to God. Look at this here. Day and night for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Did I miss something? Did, did Nehemiah sin? But from one to here, did Nehemiah sin? But he said, we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Nehemiah came to the Lord and confessed. And not only did he, con he confessed for them. That's an interesting thing, right? It's kind of weird. He didn't do anything wrong. Not that I could see from this. But he grouped himself in with them. Yeah. We've messed up. I messed up. He's backslidden. He hasn't been in church in months. Have I ever texted him? <coughs> have, I, have I ever given him a call? Just to, let him, just to let him know I love him. I'm praying for him. Hey, man, I don't know what you're going through, man. But the Lord, he's not giving up on you. Just a word of encouragement, yeah. a house visit, you know, something. You, you know that brother? You, you know he thinks this is funny or he's into this? Shoot him like a YouTube video of like, hey, look what I saw about yeah. this. Or you know, you're like, hey, I saw this and thought of you, man. Just want to let you know I love you, man. I'm praying for you. That's good. Yeah. That's good. We don't do that. No, we don't. We don't do that. We do have a problem. And he confessed on their behalf. And it's, it's interesting, he's seeking that, what is he doing? Why is he doing that? He's confessing for them. If they're, if, if they're so backslidden, they're not even praying for their own clean slate with God, they're not pleading the blood, I'll plead the blood for you. I'll plead the blood for you. And I'll pray for, I'll confess for you. Let's say someone gets, I mean, they're, they fell out of church or they're going, in, they're, they're going to a church that's not KJV anymore, not dispensational. They're going to some some Laodicean modern church. Lord, I know they did that. I know that they rejected the truth that you gave them. But we have sinned against you, Lord. They have sinned against you, but I've sinned. I could have been more loving. I, I, could, I could have, with more grace, shown them why their Bible was wrong instead of just slamming them with it. That's good. That's good. Amen. And when they did Amen. leave, and when they did leave... I didn't have to burn the bridge like I did. I didn't have to, I didn't have to tell them, that's fine. God's never going to use you. He's going to put you on a shelf because you rejected the King James Bible, which might be true. <laughs> and it probably is true. But you've got to be wise. You've got to restore them in the spirit of meekness. And Baptists are the worst with that. Baptists are the absolute worst with that. We like to be the only ones. We like when the room's like almost empty, but we're here. We would prefer that. We would prefer that than a full room. Because if the room was full, then maybe you'd have to, and if the room was full and everyone was going out street preaching and not you, then you'd probably feel pretty bad. So you'd rather uh, maybe, I mean, I can, once again, to my own shame, there was times the only reason I went street preaching the, literally, the only reason is because I knew without a shadow of a doubt, if I didn't go, pastor would be out there by himself. And it's a shame that I didn't have enough love for God and for the gospel and for the liberty I had to witness to others and preach. What, what, a, what a privilege to be able to preach the gospel. Yes, it is. I didn't have enough sense to realize how much of a gift that is and how much I had to, I stood to gain by it and how much I could help other people. Even if it was a carnal fleshy reason of like, I just, oh man, he's going to be out there. I'll just go. Honestly, I would, I would do it like that. My flesh did not want me out there, but I said, I, I gotta go because he's going to be alone. When's the last time you did something like that? If, if, you're, if you're not even at a point yet where you love God enough to where you love to go do that, yeah. and praise God, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm preaching to a room full of people that were all just out there, basically. So once again, I'm not individually nitpicking, but 
if you're not at a point yet where you can do it just solely because you love God and you want to see souls saved, at, I mean, do it for a fleshy reason. It's better than nothing. <laughs> do it for a pride reason. Do it for a pride reason. I'm prideful and I'm competitive. And that's another thing. I'm like, oh, if I, I'm not gonna, he's going to be out there alone. And then, and then what am I? Some, just some joke? I'm not going to let him be. I'm going to go out there too. Good. Whatever. Yeah. If that gets you out there, if that gets you out there, get out there. Get out there. But we don't, we're, I think everyone in this room's past that, hopefully, I hope. If not, you need to hear this. But these are the things we need. We need to confess to God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So pray for that brother and sister. Pray for them. If you know what they're caught up in or you have any kind of idea, pray for them on that. And say, you know what? I did that with them before. You know, I, I'm guilty of that too. I'm guilty of that too. We've sinned against you, Lord. Um, and the Lord, I mean, who, who's to say how much favor they might gain with them just from you, just from you praying for them, yeah. praying for them. If nothing else, they need to know someone's praying for them. And that's, that's what was happening here. And one thing you need to keep in mind is you cannot carry someone else's burden. You can't be at a point where you're able to pray for them if you can't even pray for yourself. Yeah, that's right. And you know what, Lord? We have sinned against thee. Those kids running around <laughs> yelling when someone's preaching. That's our fault. That's the parents' fault. Laodicea, the reason we're here is because the, there's, what is it, Generation X? Laodicea didn't get here by themselves. If I, was a, if I was a parent and I had a kid, that's what I would say right now. I don't, but I'm part of the problem. I, I haven't been a good role model to my little brothers. I haven't been, been a good enough role model to, to young kids that I went to school with. Maybe if my testimony was better, my coworkers would be saved by now. I've sinned against you for that. So it's not, I mean, they're just kids. What do kids know? Kids are just running around yelling. It's the parents. It's the system. It's the world that we're in. Yes, amen. That's good. That's there is no accountability. And you need to confess constantly day and night for one another. Uh, consistently, like I said, you need to pray consistently. He said, I pray before thee now, day and night. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Day and night. Day and night. Parents, parents know about this one. What, what does it mean when your kid just will not leave you alone about something? When they're just, when they're just bugging you, yeah. bugging you, bugging you, bugging you about something? What does that mean? Uh, it means they really want something. So Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Yeah, I'm not going to take you to judge not less. <laughs> that you be not judged, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread... Will you give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, amen, we're, yes. <laughs> being amen. evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good yes. things to them that ask him? Wow. Maybe that lost loved one is still lost because you're not asking enough. Maybe you yeah. need to ask more. Amen. And if you're, and, and maybe that lost loved one is not saved yet because we as a church are not asking enough. Yes, that's good. I would assume that the person who is the significant other or the parent or the child of that person we're praying for, I would assume that they care enough to where they're praying about it often. Wow. But do we care that much, honestly? It, it, I, it doesn't burden me like it should. I don't pray for any of you as much as I should, but I want to. I, I want to make that known also. I want to care about you guys more. Yeah, I want to cry with you guys. <coughs> I want to confess for you and with you consistently. 
shoot me a text. Be like, hey, can you just can you just take a minute and pray for this? I I would love something like that. Cause honestly, I I'm scatterbrained. Kirsten will tell you, I am in the moment. Whatever's going on, me thinking about anything outside of that, I've just I've always been like that. I'm always just in the moment. Whatever's going on, I have a really hard time thinking outside of like the moment that I'm in. And that's because I'm selfish. Because I'm just thinking about what's going on with me right now. I'm not thinking about other people. We need this. We need to ask God. God is your father. Yes. So treat him like it. You, when you were a little kid, you didn't, you didn't mind bugging him and bothering him, no. asking him for something when you really wanted it. So how much more shall our, our heavenly father give us things we're praying for for one another yes. Come on, brother. when we ask more and more and more and more? Treat him like your father. Don't feel like you can't just, Lord, I've asked you, this is the hundredth time I've asked you today about this. Ask him again. Ask him again. Maybe it'll get that prayer answered. Maybe it'll get it answered. And Nehemiah, I mean, he prays, he confesses for them. He prays for them. He, he beseeches God on their behalf. He doesn't just say, oh yeah, they did this. They're guilty of this. Forgive them of this. But he tries to find a solution. He tries to, ask, Lord, deliver them of this. Bring them back in church. Get them back in their Bible. I will help if I'm, ab- if I'm at all able to. Let me help them. Let me try to help them whatever way I can, Lord. He seeks a solution. And it's funny because he, he lumps himself in with them and considers himself guilty when he wasn't really guilty. And that should sound familiar. And if it doesn't, turn to Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah chapter 53. Someone else counted themselves guilty on your behalf, didn't they? Someone else confessed for you. Someone else sought a solution for you to get you out of the problem you were in. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 53, look at verse 3. Isaiah 53 verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, bearing in, bear one another's burdens, remember? Yeah. Yet we did, it, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. When's the last time you took some stripes for someone else? When's the last time you had a little grace? And maybe maybe you could have called someone out about something, but you didn't. Or maybe at work, someone did something wrong. You, I'm not saying to lie or anything, but, but maybe something happened at work. And rather than pointing out what you could have, what they did wrong, you point out, oh, well, actually, if I would have done this, it, you know, it would have, maybe that wouldn't have happened. When's the last time something like, you did something like that? We're supposed to be like Jesus Christ, right? We're supposed to be trying to be like him. We can't even be like Nehemiah. And Nehemiah didn't even know who he was. We have the perfect role model. We have the perfect template of what we're supposed to try to be. That shows humility. That shows submission. When you put yourself down and you say, no, it's, you know, it's, I, I could have done this better. I, th- that's my fault. I could have done this better. The last thing, my last point, is you need to claim. You need to claim by quotation. You need to quote the Bible. Go back over quickly with me. Go back over to Nehemiah chapter 1. We're going to look at verse uh, verse 8. Verse 8. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. So Nehemiah, what does he do? He quotes God. He tells God, God, remember, you said this. You said that if we mess up, and we have messed up, but if we turn back unto you, that you'll bring us back. One of, God, one of the greatest attributes of God, I think, is his, his honesty, his truthfulness. He can't lie. So what is it that someone like me, 
some dirty sinner can take what he said and hold it against him. You said this. You said all things work for good. And I'm not seeing it, Lord. I, I, want, I know that you know better than I do. I know that your ways are not my ways, Lord. But please, help me to, help me to see it. Help me, show me how this is going to work out for good. I trust you, but show me. He cannot lie. And so, I mean, how, you talk about Calvinists, oh, the sovereignty of God, the sovereignty of God, there can't be any free will. How powerful of a God is it that he could go, here, I'm going to say this, whatever you want to quote back at me, go for it. And, ki- and kids will do that. He's, he's not worried about what he said. He's not a liar. That's right. Only a liar would be worried about you quoting him. You ever get that at work? Or you ever get that where someone's like, well, no, no, no don't say, I didn't say that, or don't tell him I said that. Why? What are you worried about? You liar. <laughs> you liar. God's not a liar. God's not a man that he should lie, amen? So what a great God we serve. But the thing is, you can't hold him against his word if you don't know what he said. You can't claim a verse if you can't quote it. That's why, thank God, we've been doing these memory verses. It's such, a great, it's such a great opportunity, and it's such a great thing to know that we're all trying to memorize it throughout the week. It, it makes me try harder to memorize it. Back then when there was like, we just said, oh, this is memory verse, and then that was it. Holding each other accountable, but in a positive way, right? No one's coming down. No one knows who hasn't memorized it, but trying. you got to quote scripture to God. You don't even have to memorize it. If you can find it, let me use your phone if you have to. Okay, I know it has something like this in it. Find the verse. Go, God, you said this. You said this, Lord. You said that you'd bring him back. You said you'd bring me back if I turn back to you. And I'm turning back, Lord. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be like this. I want to help other people. I want to help other people. I want to help them rebuild their wall. Please help me, Lord. Please help me. And the last thing is you need to claim responsibility. He claimed, uh, he claimed by quoting to God. He claimed that promise by quoting it to God. But this right here, oh man, this is, I mean, and it's funny. He's so reasonable. He's just like every other parent. If you get your kid and they come up, they're crying and they're honestly crying. They know what they did is wrong. They're so upset that they upset you. They're so upset that they disappointed you. And they're so sorry. They're crying and it's honest. Oh, That'll get you, right? <laughs> like, oh, man. I still got to discipline you, but it hurts a little more this time. Yeah, because I, I love you, so I want to teach you. Look what he says here. After saying this in verses 8 and 9, after telling him, look, remember, you said this. Yeah. You said if we mess up, but we turn back to you, you'll take us. Verse 10. Now these are thy servants and thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. He identifies. He says, guilty. That's me. I messed up, Lord. I messed up. You said, if we, can, if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and your blood cleanses me. So, Lord, I am pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. I messed up in this again. I don't want to do it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And do that for someone else, too. Lord, I'm sure they don't want to do that. Please forgive, you know, forgive them. Get them. Bring them back. Get them going back for you, Lord. Build them up. Strengthen the the only reason you're strengthening yourself with all this stuff is so that you can go help someone else. Yeah. The key is other people, other people, not you. Other people. Focus on them, and then you'll be surprised how much God will actually help you and build your wall for you. Amen. Proverbs chapter nine verse ten: The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Look in verse ten of Nehemiah: O Lord, I beseech thee. Let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name. Did he say who fear thy name? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Who desire to fear thy name. We don't fear God. We don't don't fear God like we should. Maybe you fear him just enough to where you won't go do that sin because you know he'll come crashing down on you. Or uh, I can't do that because I'll lose lose something at the judgment seat of Christ. Once again, like me going out street preaching just because, oh, then he's going to be alone. I'm going to feel like a jerk. That's a very base level of a good reason to do it. And yeah, if that's going to keep you from sinning because you know you're going to get whipped, okay. But once you mature and you grow more, you start to, what? Okay, my dad has told me not to do this because he's looking out for me and he loves me. And when I listen to him, 
and I'm good, things work out good. When I do bad things, bad things happen. I'm going to listen to that. I'm going to, I know that that's the right thing to do. So I'm going to do that. We don't fear God like we should. We don't care about each other like we should. We don't ask, we don't ask about each other. We don't pray for each other. We don't fast for each other. We don't do any of this stuff like we should. This is good for each but, other. but, but, do you desire to do that? See? Do you desire today to fear God enough to where he will help you do those things? Amen. You don't got to pray for, or you don't got to pray and fast for a week straight your first try. God is a very reasonable yes, father. According to your measure, according to whatever, whatever seemingly little thing you can do, when it's with an honest heart, that's when you're going to see a huge wall. Do you desire today to fear God and to help others and to help rebuild their wall? Every head bowed, every eye shut, please. Every head bowed, every eye shut. The altar call is open. The altar call is open for anyone who would like to get some things right with God. I'll give you some time to pray. Maybe you don't care like you should. I know I don't. You don't think about other people. You're selfish. You're a sinner. So am I. That's why we need this. That's why we need to recognize that. We need to recognize the need to care about other people. And you should care enough that you're asking about them and you're trying to build them up. You're trying to bear their burdens. Give you a little time to pray to the Lord here. Get some things straight. Tell him, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> God knows my heart. He knows better than anyone. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about you guys like I should. But I have free will, and I want to. I want to care about you guys. I want to care about lost loved ones, lost souls like I should. And Lord, that's what I want today. That's what I desire. Please, Lord, we all have sinned against you. But you said, Lord, that if we turn to you, you'll make things right. Father, that's what we're doing here today. That's what everyone's doing here today, Lord. That's why we're in church. That's why we went out street preaching because we have that desire. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for the preaching of your word. I pray that you would use it however you see fit, Father. You know I am nothing. I don't deserve to be out here. I don't fear you like I should. I don't care about other people like I should. But I desire that, not just for myself, but for my brothers and sisters, so that when we come out of this thing and we're raptured up, and Lord, please have it be soon. We got some things right. We can have a little more at the judgment seat, not because we want the gold, silver, and precious stone, but because we know that it pleases you. It pleases you, Lord. Please bless the teaching and the fellowship. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church, as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone without works through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. 
So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure. You can say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried, and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.